Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the kind introduction. Well, uh, before I start the topic for today, I like to put two disclaimers over here. A, I'm trying not to go into any financials or marketing data of the new schools. I am leaving it for the audience to discover that what is the market potential of this particular product. I will be only covering the technical side of it. B, a lot of new schools are used in advanced applications for uh, projects which are bound by non-disclosures. So I will not be able to go into nitty gritties of many photographs or product details that I will be showing over here. I will try to cover as much as I can and I will try to do the justice with it. Having said that, So in this presentation, I will try to cover, first of all, what is the importance of new school? Why are we talking about it? Second, what are the options of material that we have in the selection of new school? Third, what is the art of manufacturing? I will deliberately call it art and not science because there is a lot of it that goes into building a new school, even more than what we know as a science. And fourth, how do we connect beyond it? Well, in short, if I want to put the importance of no school today, in recent times, it does not matter who is on the table. What matters is who's, what you have got in your nose. What I mean by this, in the yesterday years, let's say in World War scenario, when you had an aircraft on your tail, you are done. But now, you want to kill an aircraft while you are 10 kilometers away, 15 kilometers away, let's say 25 kilometers away. <coughs> There are nations who are trying to develop technology that can look and kill a bird 200 kilometers away. When you are talking about such topics, you require a radar which is capable of detecting so long and a new school that can support such a radar application. This is universal. Other than that, the new schools are also important for launch vehicles. Let's take a straight dive into it. <clears throat> What is no school? Why is no school such a demanding product? I mean, look at this. It's a car truss and it requires to perform in uh, high tech right? Uh, there was a recent submarine accident. I will not say submarine, but an underwater vehicle accident trying to recover the wreckage of Titanic. It had to work under pressures. Well, in the marine application, you need to have something which is corrosion resistance. Every product will have some or other important aspect. But what about no school? No school must be radio transparent for the radars to effect. It must have precise mounting possibilities. Only then the radars, INS, everything will be able to function properly. It must also have a temperature resistance. Well, there are radars and no schools that are suitable for supersonic and hypersonic missiles which undergo shock wave and the pressure developed in the shock wave. There is also a requirement of sound in of sound insulation because a lot of other equipment get burnt up with the noise, I will not say sound, that is developed around into the shock wave. And finally the sensors. There are a lot of costly sensors on board on the nose cone. And each one has to be fitted accurately and has to perform well. So what are the material options that we have when we try to manufacture a typical new school? So I have brought one, I will try to put it on the dais after the lecture. Uh, when we talk about the material options, there are two things that we have to consider. One, what is the performance objective of this new school? And second, what is the competency of the manufacturer to offer? So at Composites tomorrow, we have been manufacturing those cones with carbon, glass, aramide. We will take you through each of this. Normally, when you have a launch vehicle application, carbon would be an obvious selection of material when you do not have to do a re-entry. Because that is a sub-atmospheric performance, you require higher tensile strength, good laminar flow, 
a Kamal would suffice for that. But when you have an application where there is an active missile and an active radar is fitted into it, you want it to be radio transparent. Kamal would put impedance to it. So the natural solution is glass. Here, when you want higher strength along with radio transparency, you require S glass. And there are no scones, especially let's say in Indian uh, SX, there are no scones that are even manufactured with para-arabics. So these are three logical, reasonable op uh, options of material as of now for manufacturing of no scone. What are the metric systems available for no scone manufacturing? Well, the one of the most foremost that comes to our mind would be epoxy. Epoxy is with some uh, good amount of uh, additions can go up to 220 degrees centigrade and that should suffice. But when you want higher temperature performance, one may switch to cyanide esters, let's say up to 350 degrees centigrade. They also have a very good favorable cure characteristics and hence you can expect, expect that the boundary layer delaminations or boundary flow variations will not happen. But if you want to cross 400, the option is imine. Imines are having one backdrop they leave water vapors during curing and hence has a porous structure. It needs surface improvement post manufacturing. And the latest in the list is thelonitriles. Thelonitriles are a resin material. They can go up to 450 degrees centigrade, but they are very notorious to handle. So much so that after production, you may not just have pin holes, but you might have blow holes. So it's something that will require good engineering practice plus knowledge to operate on thelonitriles. Thermal and sound insulation. These are finer but important aspect of any nose cone. Uh, structural integrity of nose cone is complete with the reinforcement and resin. But the product is incomplete if it is not able to protect the sensors on board. There are nose cones that go in Mark 1 plus articles. And these articles will generate heat of 300, 350 degrees centigrade. So they have to have a delta, a gradient of a higher uh, value and hence one has to have a layer of uh, thermal gradient and similarly there is a layer of acoustic protection almost in all hypersonic and supersonic missile cones you will require this intricate assemblies this is one important aspect of nose cone as a product not as a composite when you assemble a nose cone it has to mount a radar if a radar is not mounted in the right position it can have a loss tangent which is beyond repairable. It will also have a functional deformities. So it's better to have a proper uh, mounting arrangements. This is key to any nose cone. Any joining material. There will be several amount of items that has to be joined with a nose cone which includes from metal to 3D printed plastic in today's world. Uh, let's say when you have a pitos running through the nose cones. <coughs> sorry. When you have pitos that are running through the nose cones. Several of those pitots are either out of SS, some of the components are out of 3 printed plastics. MMA are known to be the best adhesive if you have a good cycle time of 30 minutes, 60 minutes for curing. If there are items which you want to place at the earliest, then cyanoacrylics are the best alternative. Well, let's take a look and look into art of manufacturing a nose cone. Typically, why and what is such a big fuss about VARTM, Vacuum Assisted Resin Transfer Molding? When we want to manufacture a nose cone, we are talking about a product that has a very high strength and hence it requires higher fiber volume fraction. It's like very natural. And for a higher fiber volume fraction, a process that is most dependable is Vacuum Assisted Resin Transfer Molding. Uh, the process is a typically, a, if you break it down into elements, it's a simpler process. You have a typical RTM tank that can pressurize and put the resin. There are two types of tanks. One that can pressurize using the gear pumps. There are others that uses the gases to pressurize the resins into the product. There will be a resin chamber and an associated vacuum pump. And simple lines that connect to them. Yeah, I know it is more simply said than done. But this is the basic concept of RTM for a typical nose hole. 
This is one of the carbon fiber composite rose gold produced by our company for launch vehicle. It was a suborbital launch vehicle, a completely carbon fiber rose gold with an assembled aluminium ring of 6061 riveted to it. Well, when we talk about the production rates, you seldom cannot reach production rates uh, which are very high in terms of such technology. There are a few nose cones which require curing cycles of 72 hours plus. So, there is no way out, but you have to wait for the times. But yes, when you come to post processing, a good amount of automation can be brought in. The numbers can go as high as 100 numbers a month or 100 numbers a quarter. <coughs> Sorry. If you have made something which is technically challenging, it cannot go out without proving it. So each product that you manufacture has to undergo a rigorous testing. Each product. Ultrasonics, yes, obviously it is the first and foremost test that will have to carry on every nose hole. Mostly liquid coupled or softy probes are done for low production rates, manual for <coughs> saving the time and money of course. But when you go for a mass scale production, let's say like HL has a water coupled ultrasonic facility, one can build something like that, which is difficult because it supports through transmission in most of the times. Uh, an air coupled one would also help in this case. They can do a faster scaling. The backdrop of same, however, is being a very low frequency uh, probe around 0.5 megahertz, it has a lot of problems in reading the problem, I mean the anomalies, and one has to calibrate it very precisely with the product. Unless that, there are bound to be errors. Radio frequency case. When you have an active radar inside your nose cone, this becomes inevitable. Uh, the name sounds to be much bigger than what actually the taste is. The taste is all about checking that how much radio waves does this nail cone allow to pass. Um, typically, let's say we do not keep the nose cone and allow the transmitter to transmit and receiver to receive the radio frequency waves. Let's say in who band. You note down the decibels of it. You put the nose cone and again check it. The difference in the terms of ratio will give you lost engine based on the dielectric constant of the material that you have achieved and that's all about it. The real strength of no school will come when you do either a hydronic taste or a pneumatic taste. Something that I will suggest is do not go for pneumatic taste if possible because they are highly risky, the fatality rate is high. But yes, uh, it's no rule that you cannot, you should not go for it. A safer side would be to do a hydraulic taste at probably 1.5 times the working pressure. It will also recreate the working atmosphere for the low school. Hello, this is a destructive taste, so you can do only once for the qualification of batch, not for all those schools. This is it from my side. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you. It really depends on your application. Like the one that I am talking in specific had to be tasted at 7.5 hour pressure. But that's not the limiting figure. Uh, there are certain radios which are used in hypersonic applications. There the shock wave puts a very high pressure on them. And they can go as high as 25 hours. But then the product design has to be commensurate to that pressure. A smaller section over here for anybody to see. Uh, well, this is a cut section for people to see the cross section of the nose cone. And this is the smallest one that we have manufactured, which is more tough. The biggest one are up to 750 mm in dia height and 500 mm in diameter. Thanks for what? Yeah. This is made of what? It is a this is glass epoxy. And uh, it's not carbon. It's not carbon. That's right. So it is 
What is that? Aramide or? Glass. Glass epoxy. Oh, okay. Glass epoxy. Yes. Uh, I also want to ask one question that uh, yes. carbon epoxy composite, how much temperature it can withstand? Okay. See, carbon as such, the fiber can go up to 1000 degrees, but the real challenge is matrix. So, it starts from 120 dg carbon epoxy and with some additives, which are special additives, if we add, we can go up to maximum 220. As I said, if you want to cross 220, epoxy is not the right matrix system. Then one has to switch from epoxy to maybe side adhesives or imides or thalonitrate. Okay. But maximum would be 450 even with thalonitrate. This close call, uh, use as it is or uh, if the carbon-carbon composite is there, uh, it should be graphitized or carbonized? No, this is not carbon-carbon composite. Yeah, this is not the yeah. carbon, but if you manufacture carbon-carbon composite. No, we are not into carbon-carbon composites. We do not have the furnaces for the same. And it's a completely different technology to have a carbon-carbon composites. In the, out of my knowledge, not out of experience, but carbon-carbon composites are either made out of pyrolysis, which is much uh, adapted manufacturing technology in India and China. The West does not use pyrolysis. There are other technologies to manufacture carbon-carbon composites, which are much more sustainable and carbon neutral. No, but for example, uh, <coughs> the nose cone for the missile or the aircraft, right? So you supply from the carbon composite. That's right. Most common, right. Polymer matrix composite. Yes. Yeah. Uh, your end customer is carbonized that or? Uh, no. no. You don't know that? Okay. No, no, no. It has to be used as it is. Oh, Let's yes. say if you see the nose cone of Tejas, okay. Brahmos, okay. or Akash, okay. all of them are used with polymer matrix composite. They do not carbonize it. Oh, they don't carbonize it? No, none of them. Carbonization happens when you have a re entry concept. Uh, VSSC might be doing for some re entry purpose. When you have ICBMs that are going to re enter, I will not name them. But then you will require carbon carbon composites, not the uh, normal missiles. Uh, uh, you told that uh, it can take a uh, temperature only up to uh, 230 or 40, something like that. Epoxies, yes. Epoxies. So, here uh, for this nose application, uh, the temperature will go up to what temperature and what resin is being used there? Again, it depends. See, it's a family of products. Um, let me give you an example. If we talk about Akash missile, which is a 25 kilometer uh, sub-atmospheric uh, sub missile, it hardly goes up to 100, 120 degrees centigrade. That is it. If you talk about the launch vehicles that VSSC operates, it does not go beyond 180, 190. But if you talk about Brahmos, which is a supersonic missile, it crosses Mark 3. Then it goes up to 310 degrees centigrade. Um, so on and so forth. So, you know, based on your app, if you talk about hypersonic, like we are now trying, India is now trying to make a hypersonic one, there the 300 even would not be uh, relevant. You will probably have to go to 600, 650. Okay, then uh, the material of construction will be. Absolutely. Different. Absolutely. Okay. Currently, they are made out of ceramics, most of them. Thank you. Only ceramic, for now. You mentioned about thalonite, right? Uh, so, is, is this area commercialized or the... It is. It is. Yeah. And uh, when you talk about temperatures, 450 and all, what, uh, have you done some analysis? How the spent impacts in that case? Because we have done... As I understand, if you go on increasing the temperature, the vitality increases, the spent comes down. Okay. Because when you say, uh, Initially said that the part is more important. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Can you so two different things. One, as we increase the temperature, the brittleness of the product increases. This is during the manufacturing stage, not during the performance stage. So let's say, I'll give you an example. Carbon manufacturing. There is a process of carbonization and oxidation. Where it's based on if it is HS or IM grade, it will go to 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade. When you do that, you actually make it better. Same happens with a lot of other materials, we should actually want it. But when we talk about high, perform high temperature performance, then what becomes is the ILSS, interlaminar shear strength. As the temperature goes high, the ILSS starts dropping 
in a very typical exponential way. I was talking about Bravo's 3 10 degrees centigrade. Um, at 250, the properties deteriorate to just 20 25 percent, and that's about it. So, it being a missile, it can still be okay because it's one time use. Let's say Concord aircraft. If you want to make a no score, if you want to revive the business of Concord, the no score is something that one will have to pay a special attention to because entire shockwave is there, heat is there, pressure is there. So that's something that will be of a concern in that case. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, come again with your question. No, just polyamides. You can have bismuth amides, polyamides. Okay, so it depends on the application that you are going to be using it for. Yes, how much of uh, boundary layer flow disturbance you want to allow okay. in your product? How much of post processing as a manufacturer you are ready to do? If you are a European manufacturer, the label is very costly. You won't be using bismuth. If you are Indian manufacturer, I will still use polyamide. I can do all the same thing with this. Because the AMI is a really good for application in air as well, if I'm not wrong. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said, what molds uh, you are using? Which material for the mold? It is always metal molds for this application. Uh, forms you are not using? Forms. Yeah. Uh, it will not go for, uh, see, most of this resins when you want to cure at 300 or 320 degrees centigrade, the foams will not be stable of any uh, family of thermoplastics. So, with that constraint, we will have to go for uh, a metal mold. Let's say if you have something uh, that has to be cured at 200, uh, I think ISR has. And in that case, you can have a carbon epoxy mold. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, so uh, I think uh, first of all, uh, uh, to me it was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, if I, I, I'm not uh, sure you were there yesterday. I mentioned uh, about uh, uh, the customer requirement, you know, when you understand. And this is an example where uh, uh, Mr. Arshad Shah, if I am correct, uh, he or the, his company has taken care of performance requirement that translates to customer requirements and that is how uh, there is a niche market. Uh, to me, the way Mr. Arshakshah is explaining is like, just like an OEM, uh, no, no less than OEM, like a design he has done. And this is where there is a gap, yesterday I was telling. So if you don't understand that, uh, uh, then so let us give him a, a big hand. Thank you. Very good. Now one or two questions from my side. I think uh, a question came uh, about the foam, but I was surprised, looks to me from this tank, it is a monolithic construction. Yes, yes. Uh, we could have, uh, okay, shape is very small, but uh, I, particularly HAL and CA, if I call it cone or radome, they use uh, uh, no mix uh, honeycomb right. cords. So, was it considered or not? I'm not telling you it is necessary. Was it considered in your thing or it was customer driven? No, uh, it was first of all not considered in our case. A, you use Domex honeycomb core when you, you want a very good bending stiffness. Here the case in point, let's say when we talk about let's say Tejas or any aircraft, uh, an aircraft cone versus a missile cone has this fundamental variation. An aircraft is a serviceable entity, it has to land and go again many times, it has sorties to be made. And most of the times, the aircraft angles at which the pressures are going to come keep changing. It's not a fixed trajectory. In a missile, it's a fixed trajectory. Most of the times, they will try to increase the thickness at the bottom to take care of the change in pressure. Oh, sorry. So my, I think, uh, is it for a missile? This one is. Ah, uh, that also puts down my other question because I saw your requirements. You have not mentioned about budget. Not mentioned about budget. It, but, uh, but yeah, so yes. normally in radomes, <coughs> always that is the concept. So I am thinking why you are not. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. By the way, just to mention, maybe we will meet. Yeah. I know your uh, father or grandfather, Nanavati. When I was in, no, you are not uh, uh, from uh, that. Uh, mine is a very separate entity. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any 
any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. So a big round of applause to sir, sir, please, please, sir, please, here, yeah. thank you, sir. So I request Arke Singh, sir, please give a moment to sir, to sir.